Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention, all cars are broadcast number 34. Watch for a new type of morphine being smuggled into California. Federal government has utmost cooperation. That is all. Bird. Ladies and gentlemen, a recent article in a national advertising publication reported a meeting of advertising men. At this meeting, many nationally known advertising executives stated that the wild, unfounded claims which many advertisers demanded in their advertising has caused the public to react against this type of selling. The Rio Grande Oil Company has long felt this. That is why every advertisement or radio announcement must confine itself to actual facts. You never have heard or read, and you never will hear or read, anything about a Rio Grande product which cannot be proved. Rio Grande Cracked Gasoline derives its name from the refining method by which it's produced. This method is known as the cracking process and results in a gasoline that averages 10 points higher in natural anti knock than those which are not cracked. It is this up-to-the-minute refining method that gives Rio Grande Cracked its marvelous smoothness, its power, and quick starting. There are other good gasolines, but we believe that you should try a tankful of Rio Grande Crack, the gasoline that has gained users on the basis of proved facts and not on big things. And now we are pleased to present Chief James E. Davis of the Los Angeles Police Department. Chief Davis. Good evening, friends. There is in the subconsciousness of all of us a constant longing for adventure. The human being does not breathe, who does not desire throughout his life, from earliest childhood to old age, to express himself through imagination magic. Most folk dream of distant climes in distant lands, when virtually, just outside their threshold, adventure in its wildest forms can be found. Tonight's story should bring this fact home to you with startling clarity. It reveals but one thrilling adventure of many experienced daily by the police who protect you and your home and involves the most difficult and far-reaching crime with which the police have to deal, namely the drug traffic. I want you to listen carefully as the story unfolds and to realize what the trained men under my command on the narcotic squad are up against when they attempt to uncover and arrest the cunning Orientals who traffic in deadly drugs. I want you to realize as you listen that your police department, in cooperation with the federal and state governments, is constantly at work to keep the drug menace away from your families and your children. Professor Lindsley will go on with the story. <laughs> Washington, D.C., the office of Narcotic Commissioner Anslinger. From this modest room stretch out the vast web of agents, both in America and abroad, keeping a constant guard against the inroads of the illicit drug traffic. It is March 1933. Commissioner Anslinger has paused in his work as a knock on the door interrupts him. Yes. Yes, Higgins, what is it? Oh, I've decoded those last messages, sir. Give them to me. Hmm. Ah, it's no use. I can't make head nor tail out of it. This report from Germany is just the same as the others. Oh, here's another one, sir. You read it for me. I'm sick of them. And there's nothing we seem to be able to do about it. This is from Emily, sir, in Buenos Aires. He says, have confirmed early reports new drug menace. Unable to find information regarding product or source. Feel sure this market being flooded by group entirely new in history of traffic. I will... Enough, Higgins. You see... Everly finds in Buenos Aires just what Fisher has found in London, and Mola is found in Cairo, and Jason is found in Cape Hope. There must be something to it. It's amazing that no one can track down this new ring, sir. Amazing? Yes, but even more, it's a dangerous sign. We're threatened by a new and clever gang, Higgins. They've entered every big city in this country, in the world. And we don't even know what type of drug they're selling, their source of supply, their manufacturing headquarters, or anything about them. <laughs> Most 
Angeles, California. The new dope ring has forced its entrance into Southern California. The narcotic officers of the entire coast work with unceasing vigilance to stop the relentless invasion. Captain Chitwood of the Narcotic Bureau of the Los Angeles Police takes every precaution to halt inroads of the new dope supply. But as reports continue to pile up, no one in the Narcotic Bureau has been able to locate the new source. One morning, Captain Chitwood finds Detective Lieutenant Beard awaiting him at his office. Oh, uh, hello, Beard. Down early this morning. Yeah, and I've been up all night. Uh, you got something online? No, I don't know whether it's uh, what we're after, but I've got everything set to make a $2,000 purchase from a peddler by the name of Maida. And I want you to come along and make the arrest. Uh, Maida? Who's he? Has he got a record? Yes, he was up once before. Sells mainly to Orientals, but uh, has a small white trade, too. That's how I got in on it. Well, where do we frame it? Room 47, Hotel Canton. You know, the shambles down by Aliso. Oh, yeah, sure. When do we hit him? Less than an hour. Okay. You go up and start the sale. I'll wait five minutes and then follow. In that neighborhood, you can't be very secretive, so get right down to business with him. I'll wait outside for your signal. When you're ready to make the pinch, cough. Cough twice. <laughs> Here, if you have the money. Okay, my eater. Sounds like a lot of dough to me, but count it out. Thank you. One hundred. Four hundred. <coughs> three hundred. Five hundred. <coughs> and then the oh, right. this guy. Yeah. Oh, oh, I got him. Oh. Here's the stuff. He was counting the money. Uh, uh, come on, on, you rat. You can speak English. No. Uh, speak uh, very bad English. Me work very hard. I, uh, good boy. Uh, you'll be a good boy at San Quentin. Oh, no. Uh, leave me alone. I give you very much money. Never mind that business. Have you looked at this stuff, Beard? Didn't have time, Captain. Uh. Well, it doesn't look like he was giving you so much for two grand. You're a bad shooter, Beard. Huh. I think he... Hey, look at this. Hey, Maida, uh. what is this? Come uh. on, tell me what it is. I do not know. It's morphine, Captain. Sure, it's morphine, but look at it. See how cottony, how white it is. Sure, it's morphine, but it's not the kind we're used to finding. You mean it uh, might be the new stuff? We're going to find that out right away. Back in narcotic headquarters, the new morphine is examined by the police. It fails to resemble any that is known on the market. It is compared with that manufactured in England, France, Persia, Turkey, with the products of all the drug centers of the world. It does not matter. Although they cannot be sure, Chitwood and his men believe that they have been the first to locate some of the new drug supply that has suddenly appeared all over the world. The peddler, Maida, holds the key to the situation. But hours of intensive questioning fail to break down the taciturn Japanese. Finally, Captain Chitwood gives up and calls Lieutenant Benton. Hello, Captain. Uh, hello, Benton. Sit down. I've got here the name of half a dozen places where this fellow Maeda used to hang out. I want to find out where he got his last shipment of dope. I'm going to rent an apartment for you, and I want you to move in. We'll be in an apartment downstairs all the time listening in on the dictaphone. We want to get the gang that's peddling this new morphine. Maeda knows him, but he won't talk. And if Maeda won't talk, then we'll find him without him. Benton, posing as a dope peddler, insinuates himself into the confidence of Kakudi, a wholesaler. He meets the Oriental in his apartment, while Chet Wood listens from the apartment below. Someone coming in, Captain. Uh, let me listen. Yeah. Yeah, that's Benton. And there's someone with him. It's a Japanese. Listen. 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 That's uh, what you are. That I am sure it cannot be. And we are met for a few weeks. I know, Kakuti. You think I trust you? Not yet. But uh, at least we're honest with each other. We're both in the racket. You made the proposition, not me. I spoke uh, too soon. Yeah, yeah, but you sure have me interested. If 
the stuff you're talking about is any good. <laughs> well, that'd cost me less than half of what my stuff does now. Uh, you'll pay too much. Listen, don't try to tell me anything about this town, Jacuti. You may be a big cop in your hometown, but what you know about this burg isn't worth mentioning. You can't get good stuff at your price. You are mistaken. Now, wait a minute. I've been in business here a long time. I've handled a dozen different kinds of stuff. None of it was as cheap as yours. You really sell good stuff at the price you quoted last night. <laughs> then I don't know anything about this racket. Ah, uh, but my friend, uh, only in the last few months. And then, uh, very quietly, we bring our wares upon the market. Oh, new stuff, huh? Well, that's different. No wonder you sell us so cheap. Do you infer it is uh, not good merchandise? Oh, no, no, I wouldn't say that. Uh, it is natural, this suspicion, but... Uh, if I were to show you that my merchandise is not only as good, but better than yours, and offer it at the price I quoted, what would you say? If you could really show me that, you'd have a customer, and a good one. I get rid of plenty of this stuff. Good. Then uh, I will show you. Now, wait a minute now. I trust you, Kakuti. But after all, you've admitted yourself that it's new stuff. Now, I'm not going to try out a sample of your regular junk and then have you give me this new stuff. This uh, new stuff, as you say, is the finest on the market. Uh -huh. What is it? Morphine. Good. That's what I want. Where do you get it? That is uh, my secret. Yeah, all right. Uh, that's your secret, and you can keep it. But I'm buying no stuff until I know where it comes from. The guy sold me some Persian stuff once. It took me a year to get rid of it. I would suggest that uh, we meet here tomorrow. I will sell you 100 pounds, uh, 100 ounces of morphine... At the same price I quoted. Oh, no, no. Look, Cody. I'm not putting out any dough on any new stuff until I try it out on the customer, see? You uh, want to try it out. Well, that is fair. That is good business. You are a good businessman. I will deal with you. I will even tell you what you want to know. The morphine will come from uh, Manchukwa. Manchukwa? <laughs> well, there's no morphine coming out of there. Ah, uh, you must watch your tenses, my friend. There was no morphine coming out of there last year. Today, the biggest puppy fields in the world are feeding my employer's factory in Japan. That is why I can offer you excellent merchandise and at a low price. Well, maybe it's true. Okay, Kakuti, you bring me a thousand dollars worth of stuff tomorrow. I'll try it out, and if it works, we'll really talk to you. Stuff coming from Manchukuo. Give me that phone. No, 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 the private line. What are you going to do? I'm going to get the federal man from San Francisco down here on the double quick. Harry Smith, federal narcotic agent for the Pacific Coast, flies south to meet with Chitwood. The two narcotic agents wire Anslinger in Washington of their discovery. He immediately replies, spare no expense in running down the dope ring. Their next step is to furnish Benton with enough money to buy Kakuti's first sample. He is also instructed to set a deal for a big shipment and to find out at all costs where the morphine is being manufactured. On the following day, they sit beside their dictaphone waiting for the arrival of Benton and Kakuti in the apartment above. In a short time, their vigilance is rewarded. And my friend, I have good news. Uh, what's that? From my most honorable employer, I have received a cable. I have explained my connection with you. He has approved. He wishes to have a regular agent in this territory, and he has left it to my poor judgment to select a man. And uh, you are my choice. Well, that sounds fine, Kikuri. Yeah, well, where's the stuff? Uh, first, uh, let us talk of larger matters. How much morphine could you use per month? Providing uh, both quality and the uh, price were suitable to you. Well, right now I'm getting rid of about a thousand ounces a month. Uh -huh. You do a very big business. I do. But I do no business until I examine the merchandise. My friend, I am sorry to say that uh, while a shipment has arrived, I cannot provide you with a sample until tomorrow evening. But uh, I can guarantee it. Well, I believe you, Kakuti. I'm willing to go ahead and plan a big deal. But remember, no dough until I try a $1,000 worth on my customers. Yes, of course, of course. Uh, 
How much of that thousand ounces can your employer deliver? In a short time, all of it. Now, we are are limited. Business has so expanded that uh, no one place can be allotted a full supply. And he makes all his stuff in Manchukuo? No, no, no. In Kobe. But uh, it is all from Manchukuo opium. Well, uh, how much... uh, I suppose this is Japanese capital, Japanese manufacture, using material from Manchukuo. No, I guess it's pretty definite where that new stuff has been coming from. Right you are. But what's on the phones now? Uh, Kakuri's leaving. He'll bring the test stuff around tomorrow. That means we can nab him even if the big deal falls through. But we don't want him. We want the whole gang. Captain Kitwood and Harry Smith again listen in on the undercover man's progress. From the window, they spot Kakuti and another Oriental coming into the building. Kakuti carries a small briefcase. Shortly afterwards, they hear them enter Benton's room above. Hello, Kakuti. Hey, who's this? My good friend, uh, Tamacho. I don't like strangers, Kakuti. Tamacho is no stranger. He is my partner. I still don't like him. Oh, I am very sorry. Do not worry. He is with us. Well, all right. Where's the stuff? In the uh, briefcase, here. Uh, what is this? A, an old sweater. What are you doing? Give me a run around. There's nothing in here. Why, you dirty... Uh, stop, stop. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, is, uh, it is a test only. One can never be sure. A uh, rotten test, if you ask me. First you hike in here with another stranger. Then you don't bring this stuff. What are you getting at, Kikuri? Mm. Uh, a moment, please. If uh, I may go to your door. Go ahead. But I'm watching you. Okay. If you will uh, examine this. Hmm. Yeah. Morphine, all right. Funny, though. What makes it so white? Always the morphine from uh, Manchukuo is white. Pure white. Does it always look like cotton? Very white and uh, very much like cotton. That is, morphine from Manchukuo. The third meeting of the undercover man convinces Chitwood and Smith that beyond a doubt they have found the source of the new drug that has disturbed police officials all over the world. Benton sends the sample to headquarters, where it's at once analyzed and then sent to Washington at the request of Commissioner Anslinger. A week later, Benton calls Chitwood and tells him that Kakuti is to deliver the main shipment. The deal is for six pounds at $75 an ounce, and Benton needs the money at once. Mr. Smith calls upon the Federal Narcotic Fund, and this, together with funds from the Los Angeles Narcotic Bureau, make up the desired amount. In the early evening, they meet once again at the apartment below Benton's room. Phones are dead. There's no one there yet. I wonder if Kakuti will come alone today. Uh, You can't tell. Benton tells me there's three of them in the gang, probably more in league with them. But it's a cinch all three of them won't be here. Have you got any men around the place? Uh, Not many. I'm afraid of scaring them away. I've got Moody, Gillenheimer, and Hansen spotted downstairs. Yeah. And Beard and Svensky are within call, too. But I'll tell you the main things we have to worry about. First, to uh, get all of their stuff from them. And second, to get them without letting them get away with our money. That's quite a ward, you know. Mm, I'll say it is. But I don't see how we can miss. Shh. There's... Oh, someone's coming in. Listen. They're beginning to talk. Okay, Kikudi. Everything's swell. I'll take the stuff. Now, go in on this monthly deal. Ah, uh, that is excellent. Here's your money. Uh, wait a minute. Where's the stuff? Uh, Tamatsu has it. Oh. All right, Tamatsu, hand it over. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Here, very fine merchandise. Uh, what is this, Kakuri? Another run around? There isn't more than a pound here. And I'm buying six pounds. Calm yourself, my friend. True, this is but a pound. We will make delivery pound by pound. You will pay pound by pound. Why? 
Why do it that way? Uh, that is the way we work. Uh, well, start thinking about working another way. I don't like that idea. It is the way we work. Listen, Kakuti, I don't have to tell you this is a risky business. You know that. But can't you see that making six trips to this room is going to arouse suspicion? It is the way we work. Yeah, well, if that's the way you work, you won't work long. Listen, if you make six trips in here, I'm liable to get knocked over. I can't afford to take the chance. I won't do it. I am sorry. Come to my show. Uh, uh, just a minute. You, uh, you absolutely insist on this fool plan? Precisely. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense. It is the way we work. Okay. Bring it back in. I'll count out the money for the first pound. Below Benton's apartment, Chitwood and Smith face each other, stunned by this miscarriage of their plan. Quickly, they discuss what course of action to take. We can't afford to lose the money for that pound. Kakuti will never bring the dough back. Well, if we do strike now, we'll never find out where the other five pounds of the stuff are. Well, probably not. But we'll still have our funds. We'll have two ringleaders of this Manchuko mob, and we'll have a pound of morphine. We can't risk losing this to try to get everything. I guess you're right. Listen to what they're saying. Yeah. Benton's counting the money. And taking it easy, too. Come on. We're going after them. Captain Chitwood and Smith climbed the frail steps of the apartment. A floor above, they slipped to the door of Benton's room. Inside, Benton can be heard counting out the payment for the first pound of morphine. Noiselessly, Chitwood gets a key in the lock. He flings open the door. This chap won't move again for ten minutes. Kakuti's all right. All right, Kakuti. Where's the rest of that stuff? Where is it? Uh, not very sociable, are you? Watch those guys, Smith. Hmm, they couldn't get away if the building burned down. Where are you going? They'll play a hunch. Captain Chitwood runs down the stairs of the apartment. He crosses to a small restaurant where he joins Moody, Hanson, and Slinsky. He directs one to watch the buildings of the restaurant. The other two to search the street south, looking for Oriental. He himself walks north. A hundred yards up the street, he sees a parked car. In the driver's seat is a Japanese. Crossing the street to a point where the Oriental cannot observe him, he drops low, races to the car, wrenches the door open. Get out of there. Come on, come on, get out. Uh, me do nothing. Me good boy. No, no, stop, no, no, stop. No. What are you doing here? Uh, me, me wait. Me wait for my girl. Yeah, for your girl, eh? Yes, sir. Hey, hey, hey. Don't try to get away from me. No, hold still. Oh, hold Mr. still. Uh, Why did you hide it? Uh, no, such luck that it'd be in the car. No. Say, what's under those newspapers? Uh, news, nothing. Old newspapers. Just the newspapers. Yeah? Well, I'll see about that. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, just papers, huh? Eh? Yes, sir. And five pounds of morphine, just as pretty as a picture. Yes. You're coming along with me. No, no. Captain Chitwood takes the Manchukuo morphine gang into headquarters. Hour after hour, the bland Orientals are grilled. Kakuti, you're the ringleader here. You still refuse to talk? There has been some mistake. Yes, there has been some mistake. I'm glad you realize that. And you made it. Uh, Sergeant, you searched this man completely? Why, yes, sir. Uh, something's still missing. Take off his shoes. No, no. This is an outrage. The consul shall get this. Stop. I have a job for the consul. Ah, just as I thought. Give me that cablegram. That is personal property. I will speak with the consul. Sergeant, get the Japanese consul on the phone. You cannot interfere with a citizen of uh, Japan. Hello, operator. Get me the Japanese consul. No, Kakuti. This is how we do things in America. Always proper, you know. Uh, the consul on the wire, Captain. Now you shall see. You'll see, Kakuti. Uh, hello, sir. This is Captain Chitwood of the Narcotic Bureau. Yes. Uh, I have here cablegrams to and from a gentleman in Kobe, known as T. Kawahara. 
I'd like to have you notify your government to arrest him on charges of violating the Narcotic Act. He is now running an illicit drug factory in Kobe, receiving raw materials from Manchukuo. I'll forward our proof and charges immediately. Uh, yes. Yes, that's the name. Kamuhara. You will? Well, that's fine. Thank you a lot. Thanks. Kakudi, my friend, you're not the only one that's going to the big house. 10,000 miles away, your honorable employer will be in the Japanese Bastille. This case is one of which the entire community can be proud. For it fell to the lot of our narcotic bureau to be the first to track down a new source of menace from the dope evil. The splendid operation of the federal narcotic officers and the courage and resourcefulness of Captain Chitwood and his men succeeded not only in tracing the new inks of morphine, but of breaking up both the distributing ring in this country and the manufacturing center in Japan. It was a fine piece of work. The six pounds of morphine seized was enough to make addicts of 4,600 of our citizens here in Los Angeles, and sufficient to provide the harmful shots to nearly 46,000 of our people. But an even more serious situation, which was overcome by this action of the police force, was the quick in made to a nefarious scheme to make Los Angeles a distributing center for narcotics to the entire nation. The Manchuco ring planned to bring narcotics into this city and smuggle them east from here. While Los Angeles maintains the proud record of being more free of the dope people than any major city in the nation, possibly in the world, such narcotics as were smuggled in have invariably come overland from eastern ports. Hence, this scheme to bring dope in direct and send it east would have created a dangerous and terrible situation in our community and would have imperiled the health and happiness of our children, our friends, and our families. Thank you, Chief Davis. Ladies and gentlemen, a new and modern method of judging gasoline values has been set by Rio Grande Cracked Gasoline with tetraethyl. No longer is it sufficient for a gasoline to deliver better mileage alone, or merely quick starting, or just power. Before you purchase gasoline again, ask yourself this important question. Will this brand of gasoline give me the all-around performance demanded by police and fire departments? When you consider carefully this question, you will realize what a gasoline must do to fulfill the requirements for equipment used in the daily protection of your life and property. Rio Grande Cracked with tetraethyl gives you police car performance. This is proved by the fact that in the great southwest, where Rio Grande products are sold, more police cars, ambulances, fire engines, motorcycles, and other emergency equipment are powered with Rio Grande Cracked than with all other brands combined. Rio Grande has prepared for your information a complete list of forthcoming cases to be broadcast on Calling All Cars. Drive into your neighborhood Rio Grande service station tomorrow and ask for the Rio Grande radio log. It's free. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. A cancellation of broadcast number 34. A new morphine has turned out to be from Manchuco. Cuddlers are now in custody. That is all. Bird. confidential files of the Los Angeles Police Department and is written and produced by William N. Robeson. <laughs>